stars are cool, aren't they? They're not as hot as blue, right? Well, what are you seeing? You're seeing the atmosphere of a red star. Have you ever heard of Betelgeuse? Do you know how big that radius is? For a star, the atmosphere of Betelgeuse is out where Jupiter is. And it's a red star. You think it's cool? You think it's a cool because it's red? It's not hot as a blue one? We're only seeing the atmosphere. Inside a red supergiant is where three heliums have to be fused together. This is why you need this chart of the nuclides to learn how elements are made. And learning history is how I learned this. Hans Bethe, did you ever hear him? It's spelled B-E-T-H-E. I sent him two glow-in-the-dark stars when he was 89 years old back in Cornell in the mail. His wife Rose made sure that he signed him. He died like six months later. That's how cool these guys are, right? He's riding a bus home or a train from Washington, D.C. to Boston, and he's thinking about this. And he comes up with three heliums making a carbon 12. Okay? Three times four is 12. I digress. I'm going to go back to this fractional thing. You guys, you're going to all use this with your. You're not the elementary school teacher. Are you? Some of the school, we still have to see a fraction. They can learn this. There are some elementary people in here, yeah. The charge on an up quark is plus two thirds. The charge on a down is minus one third. Now, this again was where when I was looking at this chart and the way they list their quarks, generations are the same coming across, but the third one's opposite. And they don't show that or tell you that, but the electromagnetic charge is different. Up is smaller than a down. Charm is smaller than a strange, but it's the opposite. It's plus, plus one third and minus two thirds is the opposite. And it doesn't even show that. So I discover stuff by other people. Point is, two ups and a down, proton, right? Plus two thirds, plus two thirds. We'll get sloppy with them going fast. Minus one third equals. Write it out. Nobody does this in algebra now. I see they're trying to make sums and go up and down with them, and they're losing science. Plus two thirds, plus two thirds is plus four thirds. Minus one third <coughs> equals plus three over three, which equals plus one. That's why the charge on a proton is plus one. Do it again for the neutron. What's the charge on the neutron? Electromagnetic charge. Zero. So with two downs, that's minus one third, minus one third, plus two thirds equals minus is minus two thirds plus two thirds equals zero. This is real. This isn't science fiction anymore. This has been around for 20 years, and I'm like, they're not even teaching it in college. I just got a degree 10 years ago, but still, they didn't even tell you what a quark was. I did a teacher workshop at the Endeavour Space Center for uh, the launch of the Einstein Gravity Probe B, if you ever heard of that. The most sophisticated gyro ever made with niobium crystals and all this stuff. Nobody had heard, and I won't read that, that's just, it was embarrassing, I couldn't read it. The chart of the nuclides is what you need to teach chemistry, because this is what elements are made, okay? Carbon-12, three heliums. What does the periodic table say? for carbon, and that's the one that's closest. 12.0107. All carbon is 12, because it's three heliums. So you can actually start doing, I have these other drawings for helium, but you got a four, two helium. Three of those, two, two won't stick together. This is why for years people were debating on how stars made elements. And one guy, a real famous guy, I can't remember his name because I don't even follow him anymore, he used to have a theory that matter is just created out of nothing, which it really is, according to Feynman, but not the way that he said it, that stars just come out of nowhere and start making elements. It wasn't the way it was, but 424242 gives you carbon 12. Six protons, a mass of 12, carbon. That's the only carbon you'll pretty much find because out in space, they're so high in energy, these things don't hold electrons. It's all protons or neutrons. You know where our carbon comes from that messes up our neat 12.0000 in there? Carbon 13? 
atmospheric nitrogen, it's getting bombarded and stuff. So it contaminates the teaching process by bringing in something, how elements are made. Helium particles are the building blocks. Carbon-12, what, what comes after that? Picture these stars with helium particles. Stick another helium on there, what do you get? What's our most abundant element, or most life essential next? They call it carbon, but it's all three of them, really. Did you ever think of that? Were you looking and go carbon-12, oxygen-6? It's a helium difference. So in the stars, after that red star made the carbon, Another helium comes along, blam, now you got oxygen, 16. Another helium, what comes next? You don't know, but on the periodic table, we know it's neon, but we don't know the atomic mass or anything, right? Add another helium to it, 2010, neon. Add another one. Alphas are the building blocks. This shows that. Have you ever seen a chart of the slides? All the gray ones are the ones that are stable. Okay? I found one on the web, just like that one, finally. So if you guys email me, if you want it. Well, I'm going to do one soon because what I'm going to skip to. See, this is all the fun stuff, okay? But I didn't have that one. Okay. When you see the grays, these are the ones that are stable. Like carbon 12 is a stable one. But see, there's other ones we find because we have stuff. So carbon 12, carbon 12, carbon 12, carbon 12. But what I started noticing, see, like hydrogen's got the three of them. Proton, one, one neutron, tritium, deuterium, they call them. Helium, the most abundant in four, but there's also helium three. So these charts, if you learn to read them, are indispensable. What happens is, I started looking and noticing trends on these things. It'll tell you all the gray ones. See, there's like three isotopes for that. Oxygen, 16, 17, 18, right? You just don't find these other ones. They make them in the lab. But look here. What's that? only one isotope of fluorine. It's mass 19. What does our trusty periodic table show us? Fluorine is 18.998. What's aluminum? 26.981. What's sodium? 22.989. This is confusing when it comes to what elements are. There's one isotope for fluorine. It's fluorine 19. And if you look exactly an alpha particle up from it, sodium, I'm skipping here, we're going from memory, sodium, 23. There's only one isotope of sodium, and it's a 23. Go up another one, aluminum, 27. If you get any sample of aluminum and look on the bottle, because of the carbon-12 thing, it's not going to be exactly the odd numbers. This is what drew me, 27, right? Is that a prime number? 27 is not. I said 31 is all right. Phosphorus, all the phosphorus is 31. So 23 is prime, right? So I started seeing, I love prime numbers. So I'm looking, all the abundance of those elements is only one kind. The periodic table doesn't show that. So, I mean, believe me, if I had more time, I could show you stuff on here. You got these trends going up where it's, those I think come from alpha decaying from a bigger one. That's where you get those oddballs coming down. When you get up here, chlorine splits into two. Neon splits into two. There's a 20 and a 22. This thing is cool. This is inspiring to me. This is this for kids. You know, if you want to get them interested, you got to show the periodic table like, like we say it is. It's cool, you know? still debate. I think it's coming from something following an alpha decay pattern. It'll go from the uh, aluminum down, because they're all alphas apart. And I'll tell you, I've never seen it. And what I'm telling you is it hasn't been condensed into one book. So I'm, I'm still curious. I'm just saying that's my, I see the trend and I wonder.